Okay, so it makes sense for us to think you could be, let's make this pen a little bigger here. You could be uh, the inside of the square root possibly, but I told you, when you see arc sine, arc tangent, arc cosine, whatever, any arc trig at all in an integral, that's going to be u. And if you know the derivative rules really well, you know the derivative of that, by right, looking at it, is going to be this times 3. And that's the chain rule happening there. Okay? Because the derivative of arc sine is 1 over the square root of 1 minus the inside squared, so 3x squared, that's this, um, times the derivative of the inside. So we need this to get our du happening, which means we have this part right here. We need a 3 in there. So we're going to set this, boom. But if you put a 3 in there, you got to put a 1 third out front. So that simply becomes 1 third the integral of u du, which is 1 sixth u squared. And that's what we got. All right, number two. So this is another one. It looks like u could be that inside. Like if we let u be this, then du would have to be negative 2e to the 2x dx. And we don't have, we will have e to the 2x up here. We just have e to the x. So that's not going to work out for us. So it turns out this looks like arc sine. Remember the rule for arc sine? That. So... Uh, we need this thing here to be u squared. And another thing we need to remember, e to the 2x is exactly the same thing as e to the x squared. Okay? So I need u just to be e to the x, which means du would also be e to the x times dx. And that's what we have right here. So that's our du happening, right? And then we have 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. That's what that becomes. So that's just arc sine of u, which was e to the x plus c. All right. This one looks like a u substitution. Um, but if you let u be the inside thing here, du is just going to be dx, which doesn't make any sense. And I also know that I can expand this out. So this is the same thing as the integral of x squared times x squared plus 6x plus 9. And that's the same thing as this monstrosity. But we can just handle that with the power rule. So that's 1 fifth x to the fifth plus, this is going to become x to the fourth, so we divide by a 4, and that's going to make this 3 halves right here. And this is going to become x cubed, so we divide by 3, and that 9 becomes a 3 plus c. So this is one. So we see this minus up top here, right? Um, and because this is just one thing down the bottom here, we can divide that into here and into here. And that's going to become, so look, we do 1 divided by 6. That's a sixth. And x squared over x to the fourth is x to the negative second. Minus, we do 5 divided by 6. That's 5 sixths. And x cubed over x to the fourth is x to the negative 1. And that's the power rule again. Similar to the last one, so we're going to integrate that. So this becomes x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. And this x to the negative 1 is not power rule. That's the old tricky ln. So that's that. And the only change we'd probably make is we'd make this negative 1, 1 over 6x. Because that's what x to the negative 1 does. It just puts it right down the denominator with that. And this is still just this. There you go. Okay, what else we got? So this one we're thinking, hey, I see an ln of x in there. That's going to have to be u. So du is 1 over x dx, and you see that's sitting right here. So that becomes du at the end, and then all we're left with is cotan of u. And that's a rule that we know. The integral of cotangent is ln, absolute value, sine of u. But u was ln of x. 
Okay. This is with long division. Um, if you're watching this in 2022, you don't have to worry about this. Um, I'm going to do it, though, just so it's in the video. Um, most years we cover this. So if the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, you have to do this. You have to do long division. Now, it's not super hard. It's just an extra thing that I just didn't think we need to go over currently because this is like an algebra skill. Um, but anyway, when you do long division, like you're dividing the denominator into the numerator, you just look at the leading coefficient or leading term, x into x cubed is x squared. And then you multiply. x cubed plus x squared. And then you subtract. So we have x cubed minus x cubed. That's zero. We can't do 5x minus x squared. We do zero. So technically, what I should have done here is had a spot for my x squareds. So we really have 0x squared minus x squared, so that's negative x squared. And then bring down these things. And then we just repeat that process. So we take the leading term into the leading term, so that's going to be a negative x, and then we multiply that to this thing here. All right, so it's going to give me negative x squared minus x. But we're subtracting that. It's something you got to remember that. It's easy to forget that. So it's negative x squared minus negative x squared. That's 0. And 5x minus negative x is 6x minus 2. And last time, we do x into 6x. That's going to give me a plus 6. That's my answer. It goes up here. Then we multiply again. 6x plus 6. Then we subtract. Then we get negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. So now what we do with that negative 8, that's called our remainder, right? x plus 1 doesn't go into negative 8. So this is technically plus, and negative 8 is still being divided by that x plus 1. So we do all that work, and it's not, it's not even the answer. That's just rewriting this integral. So this integral is equal to x squared minus x plus 6 minus, or plus negative 8, same thing, over x plus 1. And the reason why we do that is because now we can do just the power rule here. So the answer to this question is 1 third x cubed minus 1 half x squared plus 6x minus 8 ln x plus 1. And you can do a u sub there if you want, but that's just going to turn out to be an ln there because it's to the negative first power. All right. So here... This is one where we're going to have an extra x left over. <laughs> um, you see the square root down the bottom. It's got something inside of it. So we're going to let that be u, which means du is just the derivative of that, which is 3dx. So we don't have a 3, so we put a 3 here, so we can get du. That means I need to put a 1 third out front, and that's going to become 1 third the integral. We know this down the bottom is root u, which is just u to the half, and we have du back here. But there's this stinky old x sitting there. Okay? And when you have the extra x left over, all we're going to do is come over here to, to what u is and solve for x. So I'm going to do that down here. So we'll subtract 5 and divide by 3. So x is just 1 third u minus 5. And because that's what x equals, I can drop that into this for this x. So it's going to become 1 third the integral of 1 third u minus 5 over u to the 1 half du. And that looks kind of complicated, but we're just going to simplify that out. So this 1 third can just get pulled out here to the other 1 third, so that's 1 ninth, the integral. And this piece right here is what's left. We're going to split that up. So that's u over u to the 1 half. We're dividing that out. And then 5 over u to the 1 half is u to the negative 1 half right there. All right, so that's just division of that. I know sometimes that's a little tricky, but we just divide that out. We have the 1 third out front. So now we have 1 ninth u to the half is going to become u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. And we're going to plug, it's u to 3 halves, but u is 3x plus 5. Minus u to the 1 half, or negative 1 half, becomes u to the positive 1 half. But times 2, and there's a 5 there, so that's the 10, right? That's our rule. Add 1, divide by a half, same as multiplying by 2. Um, then we put back in what u was, which is 3x plus 5. Plus c. And if you feel so inclined, you can distribute that 1 ninth there. So it's really 2 over 27, 3x plus 5 to the 3 halves, minus 10, 3x, not 10, 
10 ninths. There we go. 2 to the 1 half plus C. This is a 3 halves. All right. So this is 1. So you said x squared plus 1 down there. And maybe that brings back some, some positive thoughts of this rule. That would be back here, right? That's our tangent. Let's see, okay? So that's a rule that we know. Now I see this down here, x squared plus one, so I'm like, hmm, looks like our tangent a little bit. But then I got this weird stuff up here. But I also have a minus here. We also maybe could let u equal the denominator, x squared plus one. So but all these thoughts are running through my head here, okay? Along with all the other nonsense that I'm thinking of all the time. Um, so du is 2x dx. If we go that route, and I see this x up here, right? But then I got this del minus here, which kind of stops me from doing that. So what we're actually going to do with this one is split it up. Because this first part is going to become a u du, and the second part is just our tangent. Okay, so that's how fractions work. Over here, we're going to do that u du. Okay, so I need this 3 to be a 2. So I'm going to make it a 2. I'm going to put the 3 outside, and I need to divide by 2. Because I push the 3 out, I put a 2 in, I need to cancel out the 2. Okay? So this becomes 3 halves the integral of 1 over u du. And this over here, just we can take the 4 out. This is just the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1. You don't have to pull the 4 out. I mean, it's just going to sit there. It doesn't really do anything fancy. But this becomes 3 halves the natural log of u, which was x squared plus 1, minus 4. This integral is just the arctangent rule, plus c. We've seen that happen a couple times. All right. This looks a little scary. Um, but this is a, exactly like one of the earlier questions here. This looks like arc sine a little bit, 1 minus something squared. Um, again, keeping in mind, 4 to the 2x is really just 4 to the x squared. If I was feeling really nasty, I could. this is the same thing as 16 to the x. So I could put that there. Um, but really, I'm hoping, you're, when you see this, you're either thinking that's a u substitution or it's arc sine is what that looks like. And this ends up being arc sine because this is squared while this up top is not. So here, I need to let u equal 4 to the x, which means du is the ln of 4, 4 to the x. Hopefully you remember that rule. So du is almost here, right? We got the 4 to the x, we got the dx. I need to put an ln of 4 here. But that's just a number. Don't let that bother you. But if I put a number in, I got to divide by it out front. So that's really 1 over ln of 4, the integral. du is back here, right? So there's a 1 left on top. And this is just 1 minus u squared. That's what that turns into. So that's going to become 1 over ln of 4 times the arc sine of u, which was 4 to the x. Okay. So this one's straight up. You see that inside of that u? It makes sense for us to do this. Then du would just be 2x dx. I have the x and I have the dx. I need a 2, so I'm going to move the 5 out here. I'm going to get rid of you. Get out of here, 5. I'm going to put a 2 there. That means I need to divide by 2. So this becomes 5 halves the integral. du is back here. It's really just 1 over square du. And that's just power rule, even though it looks a little nasty. You're just going to rewrite that as u to the negative 1 half du. When you integrate that, you're going to get u to the positive 1 half times 2, right? So this becomes a 5. And there's a plus c, and there's a u there, but u was squared plus 5. All right. How many more of these we got? Oh, Mr. Smith, you're making up so many integrals. Come on, man. Okay. It's all right. You can do them. I can do them. This is fun. Here we go. This one, again, there's a lot to look at here with this integral, but it's a big fraction, and hopefully if you can do a little bit of this in your head, you can see that if u is that, du is just the numerator. And those are really, really nice integrals to handle because that just becomes the integral of 1 over u du, which is the natural log of u. 
which again, I'm gonna just write in here as I write it out. Boom, plus C, okay. There we go. This one looks a little scary. You got cosec and cotangent. So here's some things that I hope pop to mind. You know that the integral of cosecant x cotangent x is negative cosecant of x, right? So if you're thinking that, that's a good thought. The problem is we got these dumb squares here. So that's not going to work out. Because um, you can't, like, that just doesn't become cosecant squared. It doesn't work like that, right? When a function's in a function, like, the derivatives are all different. We got to do chain rule. So all, all this stuff doesn't work out. But another thing I hope you are thinking is that if I derive cotangent, I get cosecant squared, negative cosecant squared. But that's sitting right here. So maybe, actually, it's going to work. U is just cotangent. Not cotangent squared, just cotangent. Because then du is negative cosecant squared. And I have that, except I need to put a negative on it. And that means I need to put a negative 1 out front. So this just becomes negative 1, or negative, it doesn't do any of the 1, but negative the integral of cotan squared, which was u, du. So that becomes power rule, right? Add 1 to the power, divide by it. So it's going to be u cubed here. But u was cotan. Looks like that. And you can write cotan cubed, like right here if you want to. That's the same thing. Okay, so that's that. I don't know if I'm boxing my answers this whole time or not. All right, so there's another fraction. We like, we like fractions with the integrals. Um, U maybe could be this here, but superseding that, okay, more importantly that we're noticing is that there's something weird inside of a trig function. So U is root x, but it's this root x. Because then du, the derivative of root x, is 1 over 2 root x dx. And that's what's sitting right here almost, right? That's 1 over root x dx. We need a 2 right here, which means I need a 2 out front, right? 2 on the bottom in here, so 2 on top out front. So that's du, so this just becomes 2 integral cosine of u du, and the integral of cosine is sine. So that's 2 sine of u, which was root x plus, ugh, plus c. All right. This one is... <laughs> It's kind of pain in the butt. Um, you see this inside function here, right? And I'd like to bring this x in, but I can't because of this dumb exponent here. So our options are, we could expand this out. I could do x minus 4 times itself 12 times. We did one like that earlier. Um, we had x minus something squared, OK? But to the 12th power, I mean, we could do that, but I don't feel like doing all that work. So this is an example of where we could let u equal x minus 4. You see we have this extra x left over. And du is dx. All right, so we have that right here. So that's going to be du. And this integral would turn into u to the 12th du. But we got this dumb x left over here. So all we're going to do is, like we did before, come over here and say, hey, if this is true, then u plus 4 is x. And that's what that x is going to become. So this becomes u plus 4, really. My 4s and u's looking very similar. Just drop it in there. And that just becomes power rule after we distribute. So that's u to the 13th plus 4u to the 12th. And all we're doing is we're taking the minus 4 here and making it a plus 4 on the x. That's all. So that way we can distribute. So that's going to become u to the 14th. So that's x minus 4 to the 14th times 1 over 14. Plus this becomes u to the 13th. So that's x minus 4 to the 13th. And there's a 4 here, so it's 4 over 13 here, plus c. OK. Get out of here. This is another one where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So we got to do long division. And again, in 2022, we're not worried about this. So you can skip right past this. But I'm just going to show you what it is. We divide x into x squared. That's x. And we multiply. And then we subtract. Boom. x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 5x minus negative 3x is negative 2x. Then we do it again. x into negative 2x is negative 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. And then we subtract that. So negative 2x minus negative 2x is 0. 
and 1 minus 6 is negative 5. And x doesn't go to negative 5 anymore, so that's our remainder. So that becomes this. So the integral we really have to handle is the integral of x minus 2 minus 5 over x minus 3 dx. And the integral itself isn't hard. You know, it's, it's this long division that's a pain in the butt. Um, so it's 1 half x squared minus 2x minus 5 ln absolute value x minus 3. Okay. So this is 1. Again, hopefully, first thoughts. This looks like arc sine. But it also looks like it could be u, and then du would be negative 2x, and I have that up here. So this, similar to one we saw earlier as well, we're going to split this up. So it's that minus the integral of 4 over that. This one's a u substitution. Okay, the du is negative 2x dx. So we got this 5 here, right? We're going to move the 5 out. I'm going to put a negative 2 in. We're going to divide by negative 2. So, and let's talk about that. If you put the negative 2 here, that's fine. But really, it's the same thing as putting a negative on top. All right, so that integral becomes negative 5 halves, the integral of u to the negative 1 half, right? Because that's 1 over the square root of it. You understand what I'm saying to you? That's like 1 over the square root of u du. We're going to write that as a power rule. All right, and this, the 4 doesn't matter. We can bring it out front or leave it there and just do this all in one step. I'm just writing it right here so we can see it again. So this becomes u to the half, which is really... Remember, u is that, so to the half, times 2, so that's that, minus 4 arc sine of x plus c. All right, how many more we got? 1, 2, all right. So this one, this is another one that I think if you're having trouble with, um, I wouldn't worry too much about this. This is like a little bit of a trick here. So you get secant inside of the square root. Like you see secant tangent, right? That, that's a rule. But once I put that secant in, in a square root, it doesn't work like that. So this is kind of a weird one. We're actually going to let u equal the secant of x because it's in that square root. And then du is secant x tangent x dx. Hey, what's up? Um, now, like we've seen before, like we have part of our du right here, right? We have tangent x dx. We need secant x tangent x dx. So I don't have that because I got this stinky old square root secant there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply a secant in here so that I can get du. But if I multiply by secant, I need to divide by secant. Like that. Now I can't do it out front. Like with numbers, we put them in and divide out front. We can't do that here. So this integral is going to become this. All of this back here is du. What's left is a square root of secant but that's just the square root of u, which is u to the 1 half, over secant, which is u. And that becomes the power rule. That's u to the negative 1 half du. So this one's a little harder because you've got to like bring in an, an x, which we don't see a ton of. So u to the negative 1 half is really u to the positive 1 half when you integrate it. So that's secant of x to the positive 1 half times 2 plus c. And this last one looks scary, but remember I told you, if you see a fraction, sometimes u is just the denominator. Not all the time, but sometimes. And if you're stuck, try it out. That means du is 2e to the 2x plus 2e to the negative 2x. That's the derivative of that times dx. You can see here, if we take the 2 out of here, that's the same thing as that, which is what's sitting right here. So that's just du up there, okay? except we need a 2 on it. So we're going to put a 2 on it and a 1 half out here, and that just becomes 1 half the integral. du eats up all of this junk, so there's the 1 left, and u is on the bottom. So it's just 1 half the natural log of e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x plus c. Hey, hey.